Um, if you click on one of the links that are advertised on this um, website, they're going to show you the joining website. So I've chosen at the moment to install a Android um, uh, car radio. It's a 10.1 inch. It's massive, um, and and it's not too not too expensive. Um, so hopefully the links work and they'll they'll give you a bit of an idea of what this thing can do but um there's a lot of information on the the join website um now something i can tell you is um th there's various radios on here choose something that has a decent um core capacity which is the processor size um the ram means a lot and so does the rom Basically, it, it's um, if you choose something that has a slower um, RAM or a slower ROM, what happens is, have you ever used machines where when you touch the button, it takes ages for things to load? Um, and that's what it comes down to, is, is how much computing power these things have. So the lower the computing power um, means... Um, the less responsive that the unit is. Now, this is the actual link, and it'll be on one of these websites um, that you can use um, to get the, the same radio that I've decided to choose. Now, the DVR unit is about the only thing that I didn't decide to, to go with at the moment, but it will be something that I add in later. And um, for most of you, um, uh, you guys make your decision. But um, yeah, I've chosen not to. So this is the link to the actual radio that I've used and oh, that I'm, I'm about to give you the display on how to install. Um, but here's the link for the actual join website. So there's an Australian site and there's a Chinese site. The Chinese site shows a lot more than the Australian site. The Australian site only shows you what is actually stocked at the moment but if you're prepared to wait for an extra week then get it from the Chinese one and like I explained a second ago um, there is the carjoin.com website um, that you can go into that will give you a lot more um, head units that are available in the AU warehouse so you choose what you want um, what you want to fit into your actual car but I'm, I've chosen to um, fit the 10.1 which is the biggest that they make it's a single DIN unit um, and it was the most powerful that was on their website so tech savvy people work work out what one you want to put in um, so here goes um, okay this is the join unit after I've um, emptied it out of the box now I'll just give you a, a quick brief rundown of what I what I received um, this is the single DIN head unit that I'll be replacing my two DIN standard Nissan radio with. Um, so this is what will actually be facing out towards the passenger and the driver. Um, and this is the back of the unit. Now, as you can see, the two black cords both have a USB. Um, the This one here has the USB and the microphone for the hands-free unit. Um, up here, you will find the GPS out, the radio in, or the antenna in, and <clears throat> the Wi-Fi antenna. On this side, there's another USB out, so you can plug various devices into it. On the back, it also has some RCA plugs. I'll try and get the light out of there for you so you can see. But um, you've got, uh, let's get this focused a bit. You've got some um, an output for a subwoofer. You've got a video in um, and various other RCA ins and outs. So I'm going to have a bit of a play with those later, but um, see how they'll work. Now, the whole thing works off this little connector here. Now, when it arrived, um, it came with two wiring harness or wiring looms <clears throat> this was one of them 
Now, basically, this is, you would use this if you've um, already removed your factory um, Nissan radio and you've installed something else and you've cut off all the, cap uh, the connectors inside. This will basically allow you to plug into the radio and wire it up to all your speakers, etc, etc. It also came with a second wiring harness. Now, this end here, again, will plug into the radio, but this end will give you a standard, an ISO connector, and you have some various other wires that aren't um, uh, part of the ISO connection, but we'll, we'll get into those a, a little bit later. So that's warranty cards and a little um, brief um, user's manual, which to be honest, it's a little bit useless at the moment. It's got nothing to do with the installation. Now, the screen. I'm putting a 10.1-inch screen in. It's pretty damn big. Um, still got the plastic connected to it, but to give you an idea, that's... Um, she's, a, she's a reasonably large screen. That'll clip into the front, but we'll get there later again. Now, came with a microphone for the hands-free um, telephone side of it, which... Um, You'll watch us install that later. The GPS module, which, um, again, we'll be installing later. Now, the two optional extras I purchased, one was the reverse camera side of it. The camera itself, the lead it came with, and various wiring harness to connect it into the, um, the head unit. Even though I've purchased them, I probably preempted it and jumped a little bit quick. I'm going to attempt to wire in my existing reverse camera. Um, you'll see how that goes, but failing that, that's available as an as a uh, optional extra. Now, at the moment, with radio, we all know we've got FM, AM, but we also have what we call digital audio, uh, DAB. Now, the DAB side of it is... Um, like they did the conversion from analog to digital TV. We've got the same thing happening with um, FM. So I purchased the optional um, DAB broadcast side of it. Now, it turns up as this little USB uh, module. Basically, it will plug into one of the USB ports on the back of the radio. The other end has the antenna side of it. Um, now, the radio only has two external or two external USB ports um, which is this one and this one but it does have on the front of the unit which is quite handy a SD card slot uh, a micro SD card slot so my digital audio radio is going to take up one of these USB ports the other one will be free now I plan at a later date to buy the special join camera that plugs into this, sits up on your dashboard, and turns your whole unit into a, a dash cam as well. But for the moment, um, I haven't got that, so we'll play around with it, with it later. The standard Nissan radio that I'm looking at um, removing. Great little unit. Um, Over the keys, you can realize the dream- Does everything you pretty much want, but very outdated. CD player, I don't know how many of you use CDs now. Um, Bluetooth side of it, which also works with the steering wheel controls. They're fine, but um, we'll get this to work with the new radio. Um, but very, very plain and only capable of a few things. Very plain display. So what we're going to do is show how to replace this unit with the new um, joying one. Okie doke. Dashboard removal tools. Um, I found if I just grabbed the unit here, uh, the dashboard here, and gave it a bit of a pull <coughs> down here and down here, the whole thing. A bit of a jiggle, a bit of a jiggle, and. <coughs> Where you caught? Ah. There we go. We're out. So, 
that's your your standard fascia um, which is connected by the um, emergency um, hazard lights so little connector down there we'll just dis unplug it like this very hard while holding the phone but there we go okay so fascia has been removed yeah your dashboard um, not, not too bad a setup um, now you've got a couple of Phillips head screws there 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 and there so we're going to remove those now we're going to remove the old um, standard issue radio oh yeah and I did forget screws up here and screw up here okay all the screws are removed we're about to pull the whole unit out <clears throat> we'll grab it very carefully now as you notice it's a single din uh, a two din unit with a little draw below it in the actual fascia you've got your um your little top compartment so we're going to pull this out to expose all the connectors at the back. So we're going to unplug them all one by one um, and show you what that looks like. Okay, once unplugged, you're going to be left with four connectors. Now, this one here is basically your wiring harness. That'll that'll have everything from your left speaker, your right speaker, all, all of that sort of stuff, okay? This one here is your antenna now most of us know an antenna connection as being a round thing um, which with the Nissan is gone so that's the coax cable which you'll remember the the round connection this one here is actually a power lead that goes up to your amplifier now most radios, as we remember in the old days, just used to have a, a coax that came down and plugged in through a round connection. Because the Nissan has a very small antenna on its roof, um, it actually has a booster built into it. So if you don't connect this little single wire just here, you're going to have very bad radio reception. So what i did was i went out and i bought a special aerial connection i'm going to show you that very shortly and um, that will enable me to plug this cable here straight into the back of the joining unit okay the antenna connection this unit will plug into the existing nissan um, wiring harness and it will give you a normal round connection that we're all used to and your booster wire now the round connection will plug into on the back of the join unit the round antenna connection and we'll get into this one shortly but like i said before if you don't have this blue wire connected you're going to lose most of your radio reception this little connector was dirt cheap and um well and truly worth it um carav cost me 11 dollars at um jb hi-fi but, um, yeah, like I said, really can't go without it. Connectors between the standard Nissan harness and the new radio, I went out and bought what I thought was the go, a Nissan 2 ISO connector. Um, the Air Pro model, when it focuses, um, it's a model APP0120. Turns out it was wrong. Listen, what you actually need is the Subaru one. Um, I would never have expected it. It's a model APP091. And um, yeah, they're, again, 15 bucks. But I can tell you, why would you sit there and wire up all these different wires when you can just buy this one little unit? So I'm going to show you later how it all connects in. But don't make the mistake that I made. I now have to go and return this one. Okay, the wiring harness. Um, 
after a little bit of investigation, it is definitely the Subaru one that fits. So that's um, uh, from AERPRO, the APP091 harness that fits, not the Nissan. So these two plug into here. So what I'm also going to do is the key one and key two connections that you see here will also line up with the key one and key two connections. So I'm starting to disregard the colors now. I'm gonna go by what the manufacturers are saying. So I'm gonna solder key one and key two to key one and key two here. Now, the antenna connection, I'm also gonna end um, solder it into antenna connection there. So those two are blue. So we're gonna do that now. Okay, dashboard face has been removed. I've also just popped out the uh, panel around the gear stick so that I can get access to areas for cabling to come through. Just to make it a little bit easier, I've also popped off the lower kick panel. Um, remove the side panel so that I can get, get cabling in here. And now the revision mirror. My old reversing mirror was one of these um, flaming cameras in the revision mirror, which pain in the ass. So little grub, little Allen key will undo it, which will gain access to. That's your. Um, that's basically screwed on there as standard. So I'm going to be mounting my GPS, mod, uh, my GPS module and my microphone up here, and running the cabling back in. So it's going to take a while. But uh, basically, I'm going to run it all back down through the dashboard and bring it out through where the old radio was. Now, one of the first problems I came across, which it won't be my last, is the joining unit has certain size screw holes for mounting. Now, the holes that came out of the standard Nissan, uh, the screws that came out of the standard Nissan radio won't fit the screw holes. And lo and behold, every packet of screws that was in the uh, joining box None of them fit it. So, had to race down the shops. Um, now, you're after a four gauge screw. Now, these are 10 mil. If you could get fives, that'd be better. I don't think you'll get much shorter than this. So, depending which holes it is, um, I was able to screw the, two of the holes went in all the way, one of the holes touched. So, if I need to use one of the holes that touched, the easiest way to cut a thread back is to screw the little nut onto it first, do the cut and then screw the nut off and that'll re-thread where you've cut. So um, that was the first problem. Problem number two, only one of these holes lined up. So these little dimples coincidentally lined up exactly with the holes that were on here. So I'm going to drill these two out. Um, while I was at the shop, I thought I'll save myself a trip and I've got a drill bit to fit it. So I'm going to drill out both dimples. Now I'm gonna mount this radio in the top section, so I'm gonna drill out that dimple and that dimple, and um, we'll see how we go. Okie dokie. I've managed to cut down the screws. I drilled out the little dimples, and the head unit has been mounted into the little steel frame chassis. Now, I've put it in and out a couple of times, um, just to make sure everything was right. All seems to line up well. What I did find was the LCD monitor touchscreen setup just couldn't reach. So luckily, Joying provide these little um, spaces. As you can see below the black clip, they um, spaced it out about 10 mil, which gave me an absolutely brilliant fit. So what I'll do, obviously, because I'm holding this camera, it's very hard. So I'm going to shove all these wires into the dashboard just for a second and show you how it um, it sits in. I'm not going to put any screws in, um, so I'll just show you what it's going to look like when, when I eventually do get to mount it. I've set the unit, the frame, into the dashboard, lined up the little marks here, everything seems to be in snug. I'm just going to clip on the outer fascia, so give me one second there. Fascia is now clipped in, starting to look a little bit neater. There's the joining head unit, that'll be the connector lead to the LCD, I'll do that last. That's your little SD card module. So as you can see, I'll turn it sideways, it, it sits in a little bit. So 
and that's where these these adapters worked well so what I'll do see if I can clip it on while you're looking while I'm holding this thing so go in there and there and, there, and clip clip so there it is it's I think it's a perfect fit um, I can still get to I mean I don't use this top little um, compartment much I have a tendency to use this bottom one but look at this still usable the screen fits in very well um, doesn't affect I've still got pretty good access to the um, air conditioning vents on both sides and uh, they won't affect or the radio won't get in the way of them at all I'll pull the screen off this thing later but now I'm going to actually plug it all in and attempt to um, get it working for the first time it up for the first time um, surprised me actually it worked worked first go um, I've just turned the mute switch down but you can adjust the sound up or down I'll play with settings and all that sort of thing later um, this thing has an absolute bucket load of um, settings in here so well it's going to be very programmable um, so yeah, now I'm going to attempt to get the reverse camera to work. So um, good luck and here goes. <laughs> According to the people at um, Joying, I wouldn't be able to get my factory reverse camera to work with this unit. According to me, I could. So how it works, your reverse camera basically well mine comes down from the roof but basically it's an rca lead um and what happens is when you put your car into reverse your reverse lights come on so there's your active trigger so what you'll need to do is run a wire from one of your reverse lights up to your head unit which is basically what this wire here is so um the same positive so from from your reverse light you'll need to run your reverse camera should have one of these little positives coming off it so that'll go to the positive from the reverse light and an additional positive from your reverse light will need to be connected to the wire that says back now this back one triggers the head unit so it knows when you've put the car into reverse um, I won't show you this right now, but I, I have actually tested it and it works perfectly So now I've got to run some extra cabling to get this Through the dashboard and up to here. So I'll do that now To see but I've mounted everything in it's all ready to go now. I made a bit of a decision um, this joining unit comes with two USB cables um, Which are going to be really messy getting them through the dashboard and They're going to be in the way but I never use my little apartment on top. So what I did was, I've, doesn't look like it, but I very carefully drilled one hole large enough to shove the cables through. Uh, a little bit messy there, but I'll give it a clean up shortly. So my USB cables will, will basically sit inside here for when I need to, say, plug a... Um, a uh, a, um, a USB drive into it for movies or um, songs or um, whatever so I'm gonna put this whole thing back together now just to give it a little bit of a um, so it starts looking a lot better but I'm very happy um, I've managed to get the reverse camera to work um, the GPS is plugged in the hands-free microphones all plugged in everything seems to be working so I'll get it all back together so it looks half decent Okay. I've managed to get um, pretty much everything working on this unit. Um, one thing I will say is to learn the steering wheel controls was dead easy. That's, um, <laughs> I was surprised at how well it works. In fact, um, I'm able to change a couple of buttons on the to operate the radio that the uh, previous system wasn't able to do. So um, just to give you a little bit of an idea, um, we're gonna go into car settings um let's go up to um steering wheel settings okay so 
to get the up volume working on the radio. All I did was I hit the up volume on the um, steering wheel and I just hit the up volume on there. And that was it. That was that easy. So I just went through. I've, I've managed to change this one here so that it... Um, now, this one here, I've, I changed to um, the up and the the down. I just pulled it down and I hit the back. And, um, yeah, I've got volume up and down. And for answering my phone, I just... Um, I pressed that button there. Now the only thing was I couldn't find out how to cancel the, oh, sorry, how to hang the phone up, but um, I, I didn't care. It just worked perfect. So yeah, laugh. I'm not far off posting all these videos on how to install this, but just thought I'd give you a look at um, my radio now that I have um, fully customised it. Um, I've comes with a standard sort of display, um, which is an active display. There are ways to go in and change your settings to um, um, change all of these sort of features that you're watching. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to change that from a uh, from a, an autumn setting. So we'll we'll go and choose a uh, a winter theme. Um, and look at that. Okay, but there's so many different themes you can put on this thing. It, it, it's incredible. Um, okay, give you an, uh, one of the many functions features. Okay. There's your radio. I've been able to program all the channels to display whatever it is that I, um, uh, the, the, the channel name as well as the frequency. Um, now you hit the home button, basically it keeps the app running but shrinks it down to allow you to do other things. Or you hit the back button and it'll close the app up altogether. So in, in this case, I'm gonna close this app up. So what you can do is you can navigate and listen to the radio or you can, um, Watch it, oh, I'll show you one of the little features here, another one of many. Okay, the clarity of this thing is unbelievable. I'm watching a full, this is HD on my um, radio, on, on the handset. Again, up and down from the speakers, controls the volume, but, okay, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna leave my little radio plane, actually, I'm gonna shrink the screen up slightly. Oops, no, oh, this way, yep. Yeah. Move her across, and let's start up the nav system. Fantastic. Look at that. So at any time, again, touch it, play it. You can bring it up loud, bit large, small, whatever. Um, I am menu, I'll exit out of this. Um, there's a couple of different, um, you've got the iGo maps, and you've got um, Google maps that you can use. Um, the iGo is fantastic. The Google, as you know, got really good maps, um, gives you good directions, all that sort of thing. With this head unit, there is a little bit of a problem. It doesn't, um, when it goes to speak, say, um, when you're driving along, you want to turn left or right at a roundabout, it doesn't say, with, with, the, with the Google maps, it won't tell you, turn left here. It'll put all the displays up and all that. It's just the current um, version of Google maps, um, which can be upgraded to um, give you all the, the speaking directions. The iGo um, map will give you all your spoken directions as well. Little things to do, to do upgrades, um, various little things. Um, I've got settings, I, Wi-Fi, I've connected to my house via the Wi-Fi, I've typed in on the, the encryption password, all that sort of thing. I'm out the front of my house and it still connects to my house internally. So I was able to update my maps. I was able to do all of these little f features. I can, um, from here, if I want to, um, okay, I'll home, that's my, that's my home screen. But if I feel like going into my browser, hit that, find my browser, and Google comes on up. I think I'm just in range of the house at the moment. I'm parked out the front. But either way, I'm just going to exit out for the moment. <coughs> Incredibly customizable. Um, I've had it for a couple of days now, and I would highly recommend anybody who's a little bit tech savvy or wants something a little bit more than um, what you had before. 
really recommend one of these radios. Don't go out and spend a thousand dollars on a um, on on, a, on an entertainment system. Not when you got this sort of thing. Um, the yeah, the, the the features and the customization of this thing is just incredible. You've you've got widgets you can drag. You've got everything you can imagine. Um, full equalizer. Jeez, I don't know where where to where to, where you can where to go to from all this, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. Fully customizable. Enjoy it. Something is an afterthought. Um, the amp continuous cable. You don't need to connect up unless you're running an amplifier through your um, your car. And I'll be honest, I can't give you much information on that because I'm not doing it. Your back wire, as as I mentioned previously, when it bloody focuses, um, your back wire, as I mentioned previously, is the one that you connect into um, the reversing camera. Now you will need to connect connect your ground. So find somewhere to to connect it down to your brake wire bloody thing won't focus um, this wire here you can't read it right now but it says brake do not connect it up to your foot brake um, it's meant to be connected to your hand brake but I haven't done that I've just left it blank um, everything works um, but I, I will say something the joining unit, the head unit, has a connection on the back of it for RCA um, inputs. Now, the RCA input actually works. Problem is, or what I what I had a bit of a think of is, okay, when you put your car into reverse, your um, reverse camera is going to kick on because it's it's had the power, um, the the power trigger to the um, reverse camera sent to it via this wire. So that, that's not a problem. But if you've got a caravan on the back um, and you, you put your car into reverse to reverse the caravan, all you're going to be looking at is your caravan. So what I had a, th a bit of a thought about, now I haven't played with it, but I do know the RCA works. Now the additional camera that I ordered for the reverse camera, which I didn't need to use, I actually would recommend mount that camera on the back of your um, caravan. Power the camera up um, from a, a 12 volt source somewhere, you know, around the lights or the uh, reversing camera or something like that, and plug that RCA from that rear camera that's on your um, caravan, plug that into the RCA or the AV input that's on the back of the head unit. Um, now, there is a button on the head unit um, on your display that allows you to click into your. Um, it says AV input. Now, only because I haven't tried it, um, I can't tell you which way to connect this brake wire, but I know it will work. Now, at the moment, if I plug my RCA into it, it comes up and just says, um, um, enjoy your driving, not gonna do this, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I, I reckon if you put a switch wire on your, your reverse camera, so, in between the brake, uh, sorry, the back wire and your camera, put a little switch on it, which will allow you to switch it off and on. So when you put your car into reverse, instead of this wire here triggering the reverse camera to come on, you, you can flick your little switch to switch it off. You should be able to go into your AV um, button on your head unit and bring up the rear camera on your caravan for reversing. If that doesn't work first go, have a look at connecting this to a positive wire. Try it with a positive. Um, now what that'll, that'll do is that'll tell your joying head unit that you've got your, um, your, your handbrake on and it will allow that rear AV input on the back of the head unit to work. So if you have a bit of a think about it, you should be able to, when you haven't got your caravan on, use your normal reverse camera when you have got your caravan on switch the positive feed off going to this wire and switch a positive feed going to that wire and um, that should switch on the rear camera on your caravan so you can look at your head unit and see where your caravan's reversing into so that's just an afterthought i didn't personally do it um it, for someone with a with half a 
half a bit of nouse, I reckon you can you can get it working. But um, yeah, that was just an afterthought. Okay. Okay. So I now have for sale an old um, Nissan radio, um, which is working perfectly. But obviously the new unit works and does a lot more than the other one did. Um, on the back, like I explained before, that was the antenna outlet. That was used for the Subaru connection into the ISO and the ISO harness. Now, this one and this one. I don't know what the two of them were. Currently, mine are both um, disconnected in my new setup. One of those two connections in the middle here, and you saw the wires floating earlier, just free. Now, one of these two connections, I believe, is for the USB... Um, which is in the center console and the auxiliary in um, which is also in the center console it looks a little bit like a, it's a round connection inside your glove box there um, not your glove box but your your center console so unfortunately by installing the join unit um, it removed the the center console um, connections but somebody smarter than me would be able to work out how to wire up which one of these two to one of the existing um, USB um, inputs that are in the join unit. But to be honest, I, I never used the center console ones. Um, so yeah, to me, they, they just become obsolete. So that's an afterthought and I've got another one very shortly. As mentioned before, I, um, I bought the optional extra was the um, the reversing camera and the digital audio broadcasting. Now, unfortunately, I'm in an area, um, I live in Newcastle for those that didn't work it out from the uh, picture of the radio earlier, but I, I live in Newcastle. We don't have DAB yet up here in, in Newcastle, but places like Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, all your central areas, they do. So for the moment, um, as you may have noted, uh, as I mentioned earlier, what I did was I drilled some holes in the top compartment on the dashboard and I put my USB cables through there. So what that enabled me to do was um, be able to plug two external USB devices into the join head unit um, for when I'm in the x -trial. Now, one of the USB devices, now if um, can be used for this. Now, if you're lucky enough to live in um, a city centre that has DAB, um, the, the benefits of that um, are, are tenfold um, in comparison to a normal radio. Now, unfortunately, where I am, like I said, we don't have it, so I can't actually explore and show you what the benefits are. But for those that do, what I, what I recommend is I drilled the holes in, in um, the top compartment, put the cables through. So this screws into that, and you can plug this unit into your um, join head unit USB. And if you just touch the little button which says DAB radio, which is on one of your settings, um, it will tune it in. Basically, this is like a set-top box for a TV, but it's a set-top box for radio. So for those of you that live in an area that do have DAB, which I don't, um, work out for yourselves where this thing's going to go. This is the little antenna. It does have a magnetic base. Um, it does screw off. So you, you, you use, te again, tech-savvy people will work out a way to mount external antennas, etc., etc. But um, what I'm doing is I'm just going to leave all of this stuff in that top compartment. So when I do drive down to the Sydney area or whatever, I can then um, screw the antenna in, plug it into the USB, um, hit the DAB button, quickly tune it, and there's all my radio stations. So that was, that's um, a, a, another afterthought um, for the moment, but um, I'm just going to leave it in the centre compartment for when I get into an area that has DAB. But I can tell you that the, the head unit, it's standard... FM reception is brilliant. It does give you um, the option to choose a local or a, um, a, a distant station. Um, it gives you the option to also tune into stations that give you traffic advice. Um, 
and stations in the standard FM range that also give you the information of um, the station and the song they're playing. So, And that's just the analogue side of it. But obviously, if you've got one of these and you're in, in an area that um, does have DAB, then it's a bonus. But for the moment, like I said, I'm going to leave mine in the centre compartment at the top. And when I get into that area, I'll just plug it all in and, and um, use it. So... Okay, this part of the video is for those who are a little bit more tech savvy and want to get the most out of this radio unit that you've got. Now, um, as I mentioned, there are two USB connections that are currently sitting in the top of my dashboard. And there's also the ability to put a TF card or a, uh, a memory card into the radio as well, in, into the head unit. So what that means is basically... Um, you've got three ways to store um, music files, video files, um, MP3s and pictures that you can bring up on your display. Now, a, a TF card is one of these little, um, when it focuses, one of these little cards. Now, I've been trying everything on 32 gig um, sticks which have worked perfectly with this unit. Um, at a later date, when I can afford it, I'm going to try and um, I'm going to buy some um, uh, 62 gigs and see how they go with it. But for again, tech savvy people, what I've got is the TF card that can go into the head unit, a little adapter to take it, and something so we can plug it all into the computer to get it to work. Now, the two flying USB leads that you saw that were sitting in the um, top of my head unit, uh, so in the top of my dashboard, they will take your standard um, memory stick. Now, this one's a 16. Again, you can do a 32 gig. But what you do need to do is, if you want this, any of these things to register in your head unit, you have to format them to a, a, um, a format that's called FAT32. So I've already been through this. NTFS doesn't work. EXFAT doesn't work. FAT32 does. So basically what you do is I'm going to get this unit. I'm going to plug it into the USB port on the computer. As I have. And it's going to come up. And on the left hand side it's going to show the um, what I've just plugged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right click. Format. Now. This is the little memory stick. Uh, this is the big memory stick. This is one of the two that I'm going to plug into the um, two flying USB leads that are in the top of the dashboard. So you've got a file system. You can choose NTFS, FAT32 as a default, or EXFAT. I'm going to choose FAT32 so that they register. I'm going to do quick format and hit start. Erasing, give it one or two seconds, and format's complete. So basically, whatever it is that I put on uh, this unit will register in the head unit. If you try NTFS or EXFAT, it, it won't work, I can tell you. Okay, so my other little um, afterthought is, okay, what you do is you... you that's the one that goes in your head unit. Um, so convert it to um, FAT32, put it in. Um, now you can put movies, all that sort of stuff on this. And that leaves your other two flying leads free for these sort of things. So what I do recommend is I've played around with multiple formats um, with this um, head unit. Now, um, any of those tech savvies again that are into different sort of formats, um, MKV files will play, but they're going to be a little bit um, glitchy and um, they, they sort of shutter during play. Um, MP3 files play perfectly. So, and there's another there's another little app on there how to play MP3 files. Again, it's like the radio, it's like the video. Um, this unit's incredible, but I found just from uh, playing around that. An MPEG-4 file will play absolutely perfect um, 
on, on the head unit. So what I'd recommend, if you can get your video clips or your movies or whatever, and you can convert them to a 1080, um, whether it's P or I, doesn't matter, but if you can convert it to a 1080 format in uh, resolution in MPEG-4 format, um, they play perfectly. So earlier you saw my little um, ACDC um, video clip. What I did was I sat there and I converted all my music video clips to an MPEG-4 for format. So it's up to you what programs you, you guys use. I used Handbrake to do it with, um, but I also use 4K Video Downloader so I can go onto YouTube, find the video clip I'm after, and just download it as an MPEG-4. But yeah, look, trust me on this, I've um, done the research. You need to convert it to a FAT32 and um, an MPEG-4 works the best. Okie doke. Yeah, so I've given you the formatting, but how I've set mine up now is I have a TF card in the he in the actual head unit. Um, I've loaded a bucket load of MP3s on it, and I've left heaps of space free, so that when I download certain things... Um, now, when you download Google Maps, um, when you, you, can, you can choose where you want to store them to. So I've chosen to store all my maps and all that sort of stuff, to the internal, or not the internal memory, but the TF card that's been placed in the um, head unit. That way I, I don't have to um, remove it multiple times when I need to do things. All my um, my music, um, my videos, um, my little girl's dance mums um, episodes, um, movies like Storks and all that for kids, um, plus all my movies, I've put on these things so I can plug them in between the two flying USB leads that are on the computer, so uh, that are on the head unit. Um, mate, they all work perfectly. This thing's pretty amazing at what it'll play, but I can tell you MPEG-4 works best with these.